look very distinguished. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Toy Box. And I've been wanting to do this video for about two years now. But what kept me was trying to get every single version of the Yak Back that was ever made, that was ever released. I have finally hunted down and tracked down every single type. Now, there's some knockoffs. There's some, hey, this one's similar to the Yak Back, but what I was looking for was everything with the Yak Back name on it. Now, do I have every single color of every version? No, I don't. But we have every single model that has the Yak Back name stamped onto it. Now, what am I talking about the Yak Back? For the younger generation, if you don't know what the Yak Back is, it's not like uh, the, the TikTok now that you think. Yakback was a toy where, essentially, whatever had the Yakback name on it, you could press record and record whatever you wanted to say into this little microphone slash speaker all in one, and you could play it back. And all these models are the ones that you could have had back in the day if you were growing up in the 90s, you were a kid in the 90s, or an adult in the 90s, and uh, you wanted to, you know, have a Yakback. So what was the Yak Back exactly? Well, we're going to get into it now. Now, the Yak Back wasn't a competitor, per se, to another handheld toy that was really huge on the market at the time in the 90s. Early 90s, mid 90s. And that thing was... The Home Alone 2 Talkboy Cassette Recorder. And this thing was based off of Home Alone 2, Lost in New York, the movie. And this thing was huge back in 1992, 1993, and almost all the way up to about the late 90s, too. This thing had a huge lifespan. Bunch of different models of it made. But right here, what you see, uh, we got the Deluxe Talk Boy. The popularity of the Talk Boy... Um, a toy that essentially kids could record their voice into, uh, people wanted to make their own variation. So the, the next variation was the Yak Back, which the Yak Back, compared to the Talk Boy, didn't need a cassette to record what you needed or wanted to record into it. I don't know if that's still in the shot, but eh. So let's get into the history of the Yak Back and its humble beginnings. So like I said already, the Talk Boy was one of the hottest toys out there and it spawned all of this in the early 90s. So the very first version of the Talk Boy was released and sold in the holiday season of 1992. And then there were many variations of the Talk Boy and one spin-off of the Talk Boy was the Talk Boy FX. And the Talkboy FX had a tiny solid state memory where you could record and play back what you recorded without a cassette. And the technology that was in this little bitty Talkboy FX, it could record all kinds of things, it worked wonders. It was made and created by the team called Machina that was led by Ralph Osterhout. Now, without Ralph Osterhout, none of this would have been possible. So let's get into what he was all about. Ralph Osterhout was basically the real life version of Q from the James Bond movies. Um, before he started working with Tiger Electronics to make the Talkboy effects, he did all kinds of things. So he created the AN PVS-7 night vision goggles in 1982 that the military to this day still uses. I mean, that's just one thing of thousands of things that he's designed and created and invented. And his whole deal, what he wanted to do was to take something that was, you know, essentially very expensive technology and make it to where it was put into a toy that could be affordable. Just really neat crazy gadgets that would be a mom could walk in and pay $20 for and it'd be something new and cool besides like a, a ball or something for little Jimmy you know so instead of a ball little Jimmy could have a yak back and annoy her to high heaven Osterhout was called the real life Q because he actually worked on some James Bond films as well 
He worked on the movies The Spy Who Loved Me and Never Say Never Again as the filmmakers turned to him to make the gadgets in that movie or help with the technology and how things would work in the movies. So how did the technology that was inside the Talkboy FX wind up going into the Yak Back? Well, Ralph Osterhout, he owned the technology, not Tiger Electronics. So he was essentially a free agent. He could take this wherever he wanted to go. So, Yes Entertainment, uh, a toy company that was kind of on the educational side of things, wanted to make something called the Yak Back, something that could be played without using a, se- a cassette recorder. And boom, that's how the Yak Back was born. Ralph Osterhout and Yes Entertainment got together and the Yak Back was formed. And so here we are, 1994 which comes with the very first iteration of the Yak Back. It was just called the Yak Back, and it was very bare bones. It only had six seconds of recording time, and there was no volume switch, no bells and whistles to it, very bare bones. And it even says on the packaging, you know, if you want it louder, yell louder into the microphone, and that was it. Whenever you push the buttons on here, it's not record and play, it's say and then play. I mean, play stayed the same, but if you wanted to record something, you press say and hold it. The next year, 1995, we have the Yak Back 2. And this Yak Back 2, it had a warp dial. That was something new. So with this warp dial, what it would do exactly, it would warp your voice high or warp it low. So pitch high, pitch low. Got it. All right. And a lock switch. So if you had something that you recorded that you really liked and you didn't want to accidentally hit the say button again and it would erase what you wanted to keep, you could hit this lock little switch on it and it would save it even if you hit uh, say again. Next, in 1995, we also had the Yak Back SFX. And it was a regular Yak Back, had six buttons that played its own sound effect, and it also had a warp dial. The Yak Back SFX also had a low or high volume switch. That was it. No, nothing in between, really. And also, the big deal, the six buttons had uh, different sound effects. Each button you pressed had a different, its own sound effect. That was a big deal at the time. I got it for Christmas in 1995, or six, I can't remember. No, it was 1995. 1996 was the Nintendo 64, and that was goodbye Yak Back. 1996, we have the Yak Backwards, and this thing would play whatever you would say backwards if you pressed the special Yalp button, which is play backwards. And... On the package, it had all these different words that looked like it was gibberish, but if you said the word that sounded like gibberish and you pressed the Yelp button, and it would play it backwards and it would make whatever you said that sounded like gibberish actually like a word. So for example, if you were to hit record and say, Moss Haw, and then you hit the Yelp button and play whatever you said backwards, it would make you sound like you said the word awesome. Get it? All right. So so a little background of what was going on with the Yak Back around 1996, cutting in here. The Yak Back was getting huge. Since they were so popular and flying off the shelves, they wanted to increase sales. So Yes Entertainment made it a flat fee and priced all of their Yak Back products at $20, $19.99. So moving on in 1996, we have the Yak Back Warper, and this is the same thing as a Yak Back 2, so it's, it's kind of weird, uh, the relationship between the Yak Back 2 and the Yak Back Warper. So by 1996, as I said, they're becoming popular. Before that, they put out the Yak Back and the Yak Back 2, and they didn't really expect to make a bunch of different variations. So as they saw the Yak Back getting popular, they said, well, we can't keep naming every different iteration the Yak Back 3, the Yak Back 4, the Yak Back 5. So instead, 
they turned the Yak Back 2 into the Yak Back Warper. So they repackaged the Yak Back 2 as the Yak Back Warper in 1996. And that's basically it. Moving on in 1996, we also have the Yak Back Classic, which, yes, entertainment basically just repackaged the first Yak Back as Yak Back Classic. So kind of in the same vein as Yak Back 2 and the Yak Back Warper. We also have the Haunted Yakback SFX. And this one had all the features of a normal Yakback SFX, but this one had a nice orange and black tint to it and had a warp dial, all that. But the buttons, the sound effects on it, the only thing that was different, it had spooky sounds. So just in time for Halloween, get it while you can, kids, and we're moving on. We've got the Yak Time, and this was a Yak Back on a wristwatch. And this thing had a digital display on it, so you could read the time very easily, no need for a dial. You could, you know, say, play, simple. But you could also set an alarm clock, and the alarm would be whatever you recorded into your Yak Back. So if you were to record yourself saying, blah, 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 set it at 5 a.m., 5 a.m. comes, you hear from your watch, blah, 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 time to get up. You get the idea? Yeah, okay. Another thing that was really cool about this Yak Time was that you could pop the face of it off and just hang it on a keychain or something, put it on your backpack when you go to uh, fifth grade class, you know. So there we go. That's the Yak Time. Next, we have the Yak Guard. And the yak guard was a padlock in the form of a yak back. And how you would record the whatever message you want to say on the yak guard, there was a button on the back of it, and you would hold it in and say whatever you wanted to say. And you would lock this on whatever you wanted to lock it on, your locker or whatever. And anytime anybody would ever pull on it, like it wouldn't lock or anything, but if anybody ever tried to get into whatever you were trying to lock up, they would have to yank on this. And anytime this thing got yanked down, whatever you recorded, the message would, uh, you know, yell at the person. So the Yak Guard also had a warp dial as well. So if you wanted to scare them, put in a low voice, or if you, you know, wanted to scare them another way, high chipmunk voice. Next, we've got the Yak Back Pens. So there's four different versions of the pens. Well, technically three, but we'll get into that in a second. First, we got the Yak Back 2 pen. And the Yak Back 2 pen had the features of a Yak Back 2. It could record and play back whatever you recorded, and it could also warp your recordings as well. And then we have the Yak Back Warper pen, which was the same thing as the Yak Back 2 pen. And, uh, you know, it had all the same features and everything else. Same relationship as the original Yak Back 2 and the Yak Back Warper. Same exact thing. Uh, next is the Yak Right SFX. It was just a pen with the same features as a Yak Back. And it also had four buttons with different sound effects in it, and it played different things, and uh, it also had a slider, too, to warp it. Instead of just a dial, you would slide, yeah, up and down. A slider. And the last pen that we have that is a Yak Back pen is the Yak Backwards pen, and it was just a Yak Backwards in pen form. Simple as that. Nineteen ninety seven comes along and yes entertainment, some behind the scenes things about yes entertainment and you yak back is that they were having troubles, having lots of money troubles, and they saw that their only winning brand of toys that they had that was keeping them afloat was the yak back. So they kept rolling with different versions, and I think they're running out of ideas. So I think every version just got more outrageous and more crazier. So now we are at the Miss Yak. And this was just a girl's version of a Yak Back SFX. It had a girly theme. It had pink colors to it um, and very girly sound effects. That was the difference between... Uh, 
Miss Yak and any other iteration of a Yak back. So the Miss Yak wasn't really that crazy, but the next one we've got is the Yak Maniac. This had a lot of junk thrown into it, so just let's take our time with this one, okay? So the Yak Maniac, it had a dial that could switch the recording to have a stutter, an echo, or a warble effect to your recordings, and there was a trigger attached to it, so whenever you would squeeze it, it would activate whatever setting you had it on, like an echo, like I just said. Um, it had two buttons for warping instead of a dial, so you just push up or down, down to make it lower, up to make it higher, higher pitch in your recording. This thing also had an R and an F button, and the R button would rewind your recording and the F button would fast forward your recording, and the ultimate amount of time this thing would record is a whopping 10 seconds, so there was a lot of time, so if you didn't want to go through a whole... Eight seconds, and you wanted to get right towards the end, you'd press that F button and it would take you, or you hold it until you got there. And on top of all of that, there were five sound effects buttons. One would play a different sound effect each. Next up, we've got the Yak Wacky, and this thing could record up to eight seconds of whatever you wanted to say. And this thing had a sensor on it where it could detect your hand, so. Uh, you could re warp your recording depending on how close or how far away your hand was. Very cutting edge stuff at the time, to be honest. And then on top of all that, there was a dial on the sensor, so you could uh, adjust it to make it sound as wacky as you wanted. After that, we've got the Yak Bender SFX, and... Trying to hunt down all these things, the Yak Bender SFX was the thing that took me the longest time to try to find one of these things. Luckily, I came across quite a few recently, so knowing how hard it was to get them, I have a couple of them on hand. But the Yak Bender SFX had all the things that the Yak Wacky had, and it also had a switch on it, though, that would make the recording go off whenever someone would turn on a light or shut it off. So it could sense light. So this thing was more of just an elite version, a premium version of a Yak Wacky. So on top of that, of course, you got to have five different sound effects buttons on this thing as well. And there's a little secret to this thing where if you press two buttons at the same time two sound effects buttons it would play a secret sound effect the last thing we've got for 1997 is the yak ball and this was a foam ball to where there's a little button in it and you could record a message and after you record the message you throw it to your friend and the impact from your friend catching the yak ball would trigger whatever you recorded to play to your friend so, obviously, you'd record something very explicit because you're tossing it to your friend, so that's what friends do. And you throw it to your friend, and he'll be like, Oh, really? Okay. And get the idea. So, very fun. Very fun, neat little toy there. So, we're getting now to the nitty-gritty. Yes, entertainment was going downhill fast. They were trying their hardest to keep everything afloat. And uh, they were trying. They were really trying to make something new. And the only thing that came out in 1998 that was new, that was a Yak Back themed toy, was the Yak Live. And the Yak Live was something that was unlike any other Yak Back. This thing had a screen on it. It was a black and white pixel screen, and it had different characters on it. Eight, to be precise. And whatever you recorded into this thing, whatever character you saw on the screen, whenever you'd play back, it would mime the th recording you were saying. You know, it, it's kind of crazy how accurate it is. I've 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 played with this thing, and it's, it's almost scary. <laughs> You could also warp this thing to make your voice go higher or lower, pretty standard. 
And between the eight different characters, there are 48 different sound effects on this thing. And your characters would react to whatever sound effect you'd play. You'd see it on the screen, either, you know, a flower pot would fall on someone's head or it would rain on them, you know, all different kinds of things. So it was neat to kind of explore what each character had going on with each sound effect. Uh, the maximum recording time you could put on a Yak Live was eight seconds. So that was 1998. Excuse me, guys. I need a drink here. Very, very sad time. <laughs> 1999 comes, and it's the fatal year for the Yak back. Sadly. There were only two things that came out that had the Yak back name on it. One looks like a very off-brand, generic version of a Yakback sound effects. And this thing, it had Looney Tunes characters, though. So it had the Looney Tunes theme. Yes, Entertainment, I guess, uh, hooked up with Warner Brothers to make uh, you know a cross-brand uh, type of deal. And they made two different variations of the Looney Tunes Yakback SFX. There was the Roadrunner and Wile E. Coyote that you see right here. And there was also a Tasmanian Devil and Bugs Bunny version. It had five different sound effects buttons, and they all related to the Looney Tunes characters. So I'm sure one of the sound effects on this thing was a Mimi from the Roadrunner, obviously. Let's see if there's... Can it play? Yeah, this is dead. <laughs> so, uh, this thing also had a warp dial, though. So, it did have that. And th that's, that's basically it. And so, now we get to the very final thing that came out as a yak back. The very final yak back toy. And this is the yak back 2K. Cashing in on all the hype that is the Y2K drama that was about to happen. Uh, the banks and uh, electric and everything was going to shut down as soon as it turned midnight into the year 2000, obviously. So you better have your yak back handy to record up to six seconds of all the madness that was happening. And the Yakback 2K was very stripped down, and it was essentially an original Yakback. You could record up to six seconds, and that was it. But it just had this weird ear shape to it. Uh, how are you supposed to even hold that in your hand? I, I guess, yeah, whatever. But So there you go. That was the final Yakback that ever came out. It was the Yakback 2K. And, yeah, Yes Entertainment folded and went out of business, and they were no more by the year 2000. But, you know what? The Yak back has certainly left a legacy to a lot of people that remember it back in the day, including myself, having gotten it for Christmas in 1995. Um, it was probably the coolest thing I got that Christmas. I'm sure a lot of other people have very fond memories of the yak back as well and I wanted to make this video because I feel like it's it's definitely worth looking at in depth and I hope this video has helped you understand this and know how many variations there were of the yak back I had no clue until I started digging and uh, this is crazy I feel crazy for having gone through and <laughs> gotten every single yak back there ever was but uh you really can't think about the 90s and 90s toys without bringing up the yak back that's just, it's just one of those things that needs to be brought up thank you guys for watching and i will see you next time